Topo Athletic is committed to lifelong health and better movement. Topo builds running shoes for those who get out there every day regardless of weather, speed, energy, or mood. Their distinctive fit and feel combines instinctive human movement with modern performance and lightweight comfort to help you keep going, keep trying, and keep moving. Discover the Topo difference and step into a run experience unlike any other. I just invited Karen on in perfect timing as I just was saying I was inviting Karen on. Karen, thank you for joining us today. How are you? Hi, Jason. I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. You know, this has probably been one of the more seamless invitations and uh, acceptances to get on this uh, Instagram Live that we've ever had. So Yay! whatever, whatever <laughs> you're doing on the technology side over there, keep it up. <laughs> Everybody in my office right now is cracking up at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> they know me. <laughs> so I in introduced you uh, before I brought you on as the founder of SBR Sports. And I told the folks that um, they probably know you more through the product, specifically TriSlide, than, than the name SBR Sports at this time. But before we jump into those products and the other ones going forward, I want to touch base with you on um, being a female entrepreneur, but also, like, what was your inspiration to getting SBR Sports started? And then we'll talk about the female entrepreneurship component. Um, well, back in, gosh, I want to say it was about 2000, I was racing, I was doing triathlon. And, um, you know, being in the pool, and you're going up and down, you're marinating in the water, and nothing, I was having, at the time, I was having expensive haircuts and colors done. And I needed something to protect my hair. Plus, my skin was just so dry. So um, as I was swimming, and I'm no stranger to starting businesses just because it's kind of in my family. Okay. So I just thought, oh, maybe I'll start a, um, a chlorine out line. Because at the time, there was just Ultra Swim. And then there was Paul Mitchell. And the, that was expensive back then. And I just wanted something that was going to be a salon quality but it was going to be um, affordable for all athletes because to be honest, that's the last thing you want to spend your money on. You want to spend your money on bikes and fun <laughs> things like running shoes and outfits and nutrition, but not personal care products. So um, I worked with a chemist and he, we were very fortunate because he was the same one who um, put together bedhead and purology and Epicurean. So he was very familiar with, um, with the salon quality that we were looking for. And he said, no, no problem. And did it. he whipped something up and, you know, back and forth, back and forth, you know, testing with athletes. And then we came out with tri swim and that was our, that is still our bread and butter. It's um, we came out with the shampoo, the body wash and the lotion. And um, within months we had a conditioner. So we started off um, selling to the triathlon market just because that's what I knew. Um, I was a USCT coach. I was a swim coach. Um, I competed. I owned a team back then. And so that's all I knew. And then really quickly it got into the master swimming market. So, you so that's kind of how we got started was it's out of a need. It's pretty much like all, you know, entrepreneurs, they create something out of a need. Well, it, so you, that, that little um, piece there gave me two mm -hmm. questions that I hadn't written down. So mm -hmm. first things first, like you said, you found somebody to help you formulate the products. Did you yeah. have, did you have a background in, you know, skincare or anything like that? Or you were just like, I need to do what a Google search to find somebody who can help me. Hey. Yeah, well, back then we didn't have Google searches, not really. <laughs> so um, it was kind of silly. Uh, long story short, I we were in Mexico. I thought I wanted to do a sunscreen for parts because my daughter she wanted cornrows. You know the how the yep. kids all do. And so I thought, okay, well, let me go to be naive. Let me go to a packaging person. I didn't know I loved packaging as much as I do. And I went to a packaging person, found like a Doppler thing. And she goes, oh, do you have the sunscreen? I go, oh, no. What? And she said, I would call this company. And so they happened to be right down the street. I called them and they, we hit it off and they took me on board. And it was just, it was great because they, um, I didn't know anything about it. And they just really took me under their wing. And um, since then, that is my favorite thing to do in the company is product development and packaging I and marketing. I love the marketing and the art. So I happen to be a, a teacher of marketing at the college level. And I always tell my students, like, 
just do it. Mm -hmm. Like, don't worry about having all the answers to all yep. the questions. It's Start today. True. Which is it's like having a child. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just do it. <laughs> There's never a perfect time. You know, you just, There's, yeah. Exactly right. There's never a perfect time. And that's what I would emphasize to them too. And, and you just emphasize that even more so with your story. You're like, oh, wait, I need to have the product, right? So right. okay, let's figure it out. Well, I think but you do have to go in cautiously, you yeah. know, that is where, and you know, me running my household for so many years, I have three kids, you know, and, and I was always balancing the home life and, and, you know, the budget and everything. So that's one thing is you have to be very careful about how much you, you spend, you can't go hog wild and, you yeah. know, just spend everything. Yeah. yeah. So. Exactly. So Two, two and a half years ago, when I started Run, Try, Bike, I said, here's how much money I'm willing to burn, yeah. right? Like, I was willing mm -hmm. to lose X amount. Mm -hmm. of money. And if it was gone in a day, or if it was gone in 15 years, who knows, that's what I was willing to do. So I took that same concept, right? That cautious approach. Yeah. Let's yeah. The difference was I happened to be in marketing and advertising for 28 years before I launched mm -hmm. my I had some background. You had it. some background. Yeah, I didn't have a background, but you know, you just use common sense. That's a lot of it is common sense. The other yeah. thing you mentioned, you owned a team. So what was the team? How did you get started in owning a team and, and moving that forward? And how did you grow that business? It's a okay, so back in the day, um, in I want to say it was like 2003, maybe I can't, I can't remember all the dates. Um, I was coaching for this, uh, one gal and she owned, um, what was it called? O Orange County Divas, I think it was okay. something okay. like that. Anyways. So I trained women and I love coaching. I mean, if I could, if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably still be swim coaching. And you know, that's what I do too on the side, just for fun as I coach small businesses. It's just, it's fun for me. Yeah. And um, so anyways, I was doing that. And then I went into getting my USAT um, certificate. And then I had to quit the OC Divas or whatever it was called. I can't remember. But um, then some of the gals that I was coaching, they were so sad. And they said, well, why don't you start coaching us? So then that's how we started putting together a team. And then um, some guys came on board too. So we had we just changed it to um, SoCal Dry Team. I love time. it. Yeah. Dry Serial Entrepreneur. This fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, you should hear some of the other things I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like I've had two or three other failed businesses already. And just yesterday, and by the way, for those of you that are listening, Karen and SBR Sports is a partner of ours too. Um, Katula is a partner of ours. And I sent them an idea that I had the other day because I was like, oh, you guys have, you know, gators for running, but, mm -hmm. you know, mountain bikers and gravel cyclists get mud and muck on their stuff too. Yep. So just send mm -hmm. them an idea, right? And so don't don't be surprised if now that I know that you're a serial entrepreneur, if I don't. don't uh, is <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've done that before. Well, actually, we've had people contact us and that's how we came out with um, Skin Slick. So we had TriSlide, which is a continuous spray skin lubricant. And then we had runners that were contacting us saying, you know, this is the best anti-chafe, anti-blister product we've ever used. And so because of that, we came out with Skin Slick because it wasn't so try, you know, try yeah. related. Um, sometimes runners, well, back in the day, cyclists didn't like triathletes and <laughs> runners didn't like triathletes. Now it's kind of like everybody gets along, right? But... <laughs> But, you know, back I, in the day, that's how it was. Get along with anybody else anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's still there. <laughs> so. So where, so tell us where can, um, you mentioned Skin Slick, you mentioned Dry Slide, mm -hmm. you mentioned your um, skincare and hair care um, products mm -hmm. as well. Outside of sbrsports.com, where else can, uh, where else can other people find your products then? Have you well, grown that? that? Yeah, we've grown. So we started in 2004 and now we're global. So we've been all over the world for quite a while. We have, I have an office in Poland um, and we uh, manufacture a lot of our products over there too. Um, and so because I have the office over there, they handle all of the European uh, stores and distributors and the Middle East. Okay. And then we handle um, an, out of our office, which is in Santa Ana, California, 
we handle um, United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, all of Asia. And, and then China, we have, we don't have TriSwim over there. We have SBR Swim. And that was a whole nother story. We had trademark issues. So we had to change the name, but it's basically the same product over there. Yeah. Fascinating. So uh, you're looking at global uh, marketing then. Mm -hmm. What do you find to be like the most challenging part of marketing a, a brand like yours globally? Yeah, it's, um, it is challenging. And that's why I have an office over in Europe because Europeans, especially Eastern Europe, they look a lot different. Their marketing is different. The colors that they use for marketing is different. Um, the message that they're sending out. Um, and then also the, we have all the languages over there too. Yeah. So, um, so thank goodness my um, president, Marcin Logan, he handles all the currencies, all the Amazons. You know, here we're very fortunate. Amazon, we have Amazon USA. That's it. Over <laughs> there, they have Amazon Poland, Amazon UK, Amazon Italy, Amazon Germany, I think it is. Yeah. It's just, and, and each one has their different set of rules and each one has a different language. So, um, and each one has their different artwork too well, with the languages. Just yeah. about to ask you that because with us, your advertisements, whether they're in our digital magazine or the banners, they are super vibrant. Oh, colors, yeah. right? they, they jump off the page. When you mentioned different colors in Europe, is it, are you using vibrant colors? Do they have to be more muted or are they even more wild? Well, they, no, they're not more wild. Um, they kind of follow, Europe follows uh, United States. And I think a lot of United States or, uh, you know, the East Coast follows California. So we always think, well, we like to think it, but I don't know if it's true, that we're kind of the ones that the pioneers of what things are going to look like. And so we, we have such a fun company to work for. I mean, everybody who works for me has just such a good sense of humor. It's like a family. And so we want to reflect that in our products. Um, and so that's why we have so many different vibrant colors. And, and plus, my background was in art, too. So it's, it gives me a little outlet. Speaking of products, let's continue down that path. So we've talked about, again, the, the hair and skincare products. We've talked about um, Skin Slick and Tri Slide. What other products do you have that our audience should know? And what else can we be looking forward to for your products? Uh, uh, well, we have Foggies, and that's an anti-fog wipe. Um, and again, all of these products were creative out of, created out of a need. So Skin, uh, Skin Slick and Tri-Slide, they were created because we, back in the day, we used to use Pam to put our wetsuits on. <laughs> And, but anything vegetable based or petroleum based is going to ruin your neoprene. And I didn't believe that until it happened to me. And so I thought, what do I like about Pam? Well, I came up with, you know, a silicone, it's a special blended silicone that's in like an aerosol, you know, mm -hmm. that sprays on like Pam. Um, so then we have foggies, which is an anti-fog wipe. And I was doing an open water swim one time and, you know, how you had the drops and you put the drops in. Well, you have to yeah. look for a clean cloth. I didn't have a clean cloth because everything was infested with sand. So um, then I went out, as I was swimming, I'm thinking, why hasn't anyone ever come out with an anti-fog infused on a little soft towelette? So that's what we have. And the nice thing about foggies is um, you can get six applications out of one wipe. Oh, wow. So you may, yeah, so you may buy a, a box of six and you can get 36 swims out of one. And for a guy like me, that's probably a good two to three months worth of swimming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, so, but what I always say to people about the foggies is that you um, wait till your anti-fog goes on your goggles. Because you know how it always goes after you know, yeah. four times, no matter what, it's going to go after four times, four or five. And then you start using the foggy. So it extends the life of your goggles. It also, um, one time I remember I was in line, I was at a tear sale and this guy, he was standing in back of me with his daughter and he said, oh my gosh, you should try this product it's called foggies. <laughs> and he didn't know who I was. And he said that it saved his daughter because she had, um, you know, when they have the foam goggles, yep. Well, sometimes that foam develops bacteria in the foam. And so they were using the foggies to not only defog her lens and clean it, but they were cleaning the foam as well. And it acted as an antibacterial and, and her rash went away. Amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. So then let's see what else um, we have. Oh, we have our brush that we just came out with. Breaking yeah. news. And breaking news. Um, it just came out and we launched it at the Master Swim, United States Master Swim Meet. Um, which was here in Irvine. And oh my gosh, people were going crazy. They, everybody was saying it's the best swimmer's brush they've ever used. So um, that one's called De Brush. <laughs> I love De Brush. Customer, but it, it fell. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't work here. <laughs> However, my dad, who has no hair, I said, Dad, do you want a brush? And he goes, Oh no. And I go, You can massage your head and you can, you do it in circular patterns and it stimulates your, your scalp. That's it's nice. I yeah, it's that. nice. So we have that. We also have um, Tri Swim Kids, which is basically it's just, just our regular shampoo, conditioner, body wash, lotion, but in kids packaging. But for two years, we've been in formulation for our Tri Swim Kids Swim Suds line. And that is the only natural, tear free, chlorine out, two in one product. It's a shampoo, body wash on the market in the world. So for those parents who are a little concerned about chemicals, and this one is the product you're gonna to wanna to use to take the chlorine off of your um, your kid's skin and hair. So you yeah. mentioned a lot of the products that you have are um, born out of necessity, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody needs it. So is the brush the same way? And then how long does it take for you to hear somebody say, or somebody reach out to you and say, hey, I need, do you have something like X? that you start to really dive into the lab and say, can we develop this for our business? Well, because we are all um, super creative people, we get excited when people call in and say, hey, you know, what about this? What about that? Now, some of them, it doesn't work. You know, some of them were like, no, that's not gonna, that's not gonna happen. But other ones, you know, we think, oh, that could be something like, for instance, um, Andrew, one of my guys, uh, he was at the USMS meet and he had several people coming up saying, do you have a detangler? Do you have, you know, a conditioner or, um, what is it called? Well, leave-in conditioner. Yeah. So I think we're going to start, you know, working on that. Um, we're working on some other things that I don't want to say right now, but um, there is one thing, very exciting thing that's going to launch, and that's called Dermasport. So Dermasport, we used to have it. Um, it was uh, developed for swimmers to take skin off of, I mean, skin off, to take the chlorine off of your facial skin. Okay. And, um, you know, which we're experts in that. But this does it gently. And so it's an anti-aging. It removes the chlorine. Um, it helps with acne because a lot of swimmers will get acne from the chlorine. If yep. they don't take it off their skin, their pores overcompensate and create more oils, which then clogs the pores. So anyways, this helps with it. But for four years, we've been, you know, pretty much testing out the original. And now um, we've sent it back to the chemist and with changes and we reformulate it. We're rebranding it. We've worked with um, a dermatologist and he's been a, a lifelong swimmer. So he's been consulting us. Um, we've got some Olympians on board right. and we're very excited about this product that's coming out. So are, very excited. Are there, it sounds super exciting. Are there applications for people who aren't swimmers that could use yeah. something like this product? Yeah, that's a good question so well first of all it has the cleanser the moisturizer the eye cream and um why am i forgetting something oh the sunscreen the sunscreen is going to be amazing it's like we've been testing it out and it feels like it just feels so amazing on your skin um but sorry what did you ask me <laughs> so i was asking the application for people like myself who who's sort oh. of got a triathlon and more into ultra right. running Okay, so we develop this for people who have dry skin and um, or nor like my skin's normal to oily, but it works great. Um, but with chlorine, chlorine is up in all tap water. So you don't realize how much damage chlorine is doing to your hair and your skin until you take it off. And that's kind of the same with our foggies. You don't realize how dirty your goggles are from licking it, you know, to try you. <laughs> and then you use it and you're like, oh my God, I can see the bottom of the pool. But, um, but with this Dermasport, I'm telling you, be on the lookout for this. We've got it in pump containers. Um, the packaging is beautiful. Um, but yeah, that, that one's 
That one's going to be amazing. Is the packaging you're doing? No, I can't take credit on this one. This is the first time that, um, that we've sent it out to, you know, an outside agency. And because we did have to compete, that's where my, I was very naive when I came out with Dermasport in the very beginning, because I felt like we had such a following for TriSwim, there would right. be a natural progression. People would buy the Dermasport, but there is so much competition with facial skincare so that's why, yeah, that's why we kind of pulled it away. We partnered with, um, with another major swim company. I don't want to say who they are. I'm not sure if I can, but, um, but no, it's just, it's a very exciting, exciting product and it's going to change your, your skin. So when you say you partnered with another uh, company, is it going to be a co-branded product that goes out then? Uh, it's going to be on its own, but we've partnered together and we're leveraging a lot of our, um, our client base. Yep. Um, but the Olympians that we've been working with are very excited and they're backing it up. Awesome. So, I know I want, yeah. I want to touch base on the athletes that you work with because I know you also have ambassadors, but yeah, we have 90, we have 90 ambassadors here in the United States and then we have 15 over in Europe. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Before we on the ambassadors and how you go about selecting them and, and bringing them into the family. So, you know, you're a female who is running a business, a business that you started that you admitted don't know, didn't know much about, if anything at all. Mm -hmm. You were a competitive triathlete. Like, what are some of the challenges you faced as a female in business that you were able to overcome because of your uh, competitive triathlete side and running a team? as well that I found out mm -hmm. earlier. How does that translate to running the company that you run? Um, you know, I, I guess because I was competitive in triathlon, it taught me to be competitive in business. And somewhat, you know, we have plugged along and, along and kept our head down since 2004. And there's so many different products that come out that are similar, you know, different brands that yep. try and compete in our space. And, you know, of course we're human, we get freaked out, but we just say, just stay in our lane, keep your head down and do yep. what you do best. And that's what you, what you're doing in triathlon too. It's like, you can't, you can't be affected by all the noise that's out there. Um, you know, you may be a triathlete and you may have an older bike and you're next to somebody that has this fantastic, you know, $12,000 bike with, you know, deep dish wheels and all that. And, and you're like, oh my God. And they're in your same age group and you're freaking out, but then maybe they might come in last. You don't know. Maybe they have all the bells and whistles. So, you know, we just, we just keep plugging along. I never think that um, whenever someone is competing against us, I actually think it's a good thing for us. It's, it's healthy because yeah. it makes us elevate ourselves, you know, and, you know, we're all human where you just, you start doing the same old thing and, and, you know, you, you just start resting on, you know, that you everything's going to be fine. And then someone else comes in and it makes you really, wake up. I love the competition, you know, that aspect. And, you know, we're a media company, mm -hmm. and, right? And there's, so we oh. compete with other magazines yeah. and stuff like that, right? We're, we're literally, we're competing with influencers too, mm -hmm. right? They're putting budgets that are being allocated and there are companies that are going to allocate money to influencers and we get it, right? So we have to do the same thing. Like, what are they, what are they doing? What are our competitors doing? But simultaneously, staying true to our vision and mission, which was mm -hmm. to always tell the extraordinary story of the ordinary athlete. And so mm -hmm. we just stay in that path and, and we do that as best as we can to what your point was, right? Like competition is healthy, but make sure you're doing the things that you're fully capable of as opposed to trying to do what they're doing, right? Right, so, right, right, yeah. Um, so let's talk about the athletes, 90 ambassadors mm -hmm. here in the US, 15 overseas. like when you started the ambassador program, did you ever think it would get this big and, and mm -mm. get managed? Well, luckily I have two people that manage the athletes. So um, when we first started, you know, it's been trial and error for many years. I'm, oh, it's, you know, and, and I'm really happy with our athletes because none of them get paid. I have been hit up, oh, so many times over the years with professional athletes and 
you know, it's, we can't afford it. And that goes back to the whole, you got to be careful about what you spend your money on because it's very uh, tempting to, you know, get a call from an agent of so-and-so and, you know, so-and-so wants to represent your brand. Well, you know, that could be a ton of money yeah. and you may not see return on your investment with that. Yeah. So we had to be very careful. So what we did was we opened it up to um, people who just wanted to be a part of our company. And um, we have a questionnaire that goes out. Um, it's pretty much an application. I think it goes out, I want to say it's usually in November. And then we close it out in December. And then the decisions are made in January, I think. So, um, but I'm really happy because all the people who, who are ambassadors, they're, they believe in our products and, you know, going back to how you work with the ordinary athlete, mm -hmm. we do too. Yeah. We, we love working with, you know, kids. We love working with old people. We love working with maybe my favorite is when you see someone who's overweight and they're doing the triathlon and because yeah. that is not easy to do and you know and i love i love seeing all of that i love working with women i love working with men and that's where i was really fortunate in the business too is that when i came in you know the, there was hardly any women doing triathlon and um and being ceos of you know companies like in our space and so all these guys i don't know i think i've i've always gotten along with guys and so these guys of different companies like John Mix from Finis and, you know, other ones, they would take me under their wing. Like I was their sister, you know, little sister. And they would teach me, like they would give me little, you know, piece of advice. And that's where I like to coach other companies or someone who has a question because it's just paying it forward. That's all. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You meant to, as you were giving us that answer, I just thought of something. So like, you said that your family was, you know, started businesses and it's kind of always been in your blood, mm -hmm. um, which means that you're, you're by nature, a, a risk taker. Mm -hmm. I you, guess. <laughs> yeah. You know what, my, we were just talking about this, um, that to, to really live life fully, you have to take risks at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Start, starting a business is one thing, but no matter what it is, you have like, go to a restaurant and order the dish that doesn't sound like something you would eat, right? Because it might be fantastic. Right. Right. Is small of a risk is that, but when you um, do you think if you had not had that sort of um, background in, in families in your family starting businesses and running businesses, do you think you would have been a risk taker and started this business? Honestly, I don't know. I I don't know. I I have no idea. It's like people always say, "Would you knowing what you know now, would you right. do it again?" Or how do they word it? I always say either I'm really dumb or, <laughs> or really determined. Um, I mean, because there are times where, you know, in the very beginning, I was working for five cents an hour. If that, maybe a penny an hour, you yep. know, there are yep. times where you have to not pay yourself to pay your employees, especially during COVID, you know, that was another yep. story. But even before that, you know, you had to save enough money to make more product. You there's always a challenge yeah. that comes along. It's not a day that goes by that I don't have a problem that I have to solve. And I think that that's what I learned in my upbringing. Now that we're talking about it, my parent, I come from a long line of problem solvers. And my mom, she just mentioned this the other day. She goes, you know, we're all problem solvers. My kids are all problem solvers, you know, and I was talking to, um, uh, his name is John, uh, James Locke. Uh, he's from Zone 3. Okay. And, um, you know, the wetsuits yep. and swimsuits and stuff. I was talking to him this morning, and I said, isn't it nice when you're watching a movie and you see they're starting a business, but then they go through all these problems and they can't pay themselves? Doesn't that make you feel good? You know, it's like, it's like misery loves company. You like seeing <laughs> other people, you know, are having the same problems that you're having. And, well, and it just never goes away. I'll put myself in the group with you guys too, because yeah, when you first start out, like you're so focused on the growing the business and everything else, to your point, you're making a nickel an hour, a dime, a penny yeah. an hour, if anything at all, right? You're just, yeah. you're just trying to grow the business. I mean, we're only two and a half years old 
Um, and I mentioned that, you know, when I launched the business, I had 28 years of marketing and advertising experience, but that doesn't mean anything, mm -mm. right? <laughs> you know, you I've have got, a good infrastructure. Yeah. Then, I still yeah. Of people like you, like we talk about risk, like I found you on LinkedIn and I was like, you know, cold email. Let's see what happens. Worst case scenario. Yeah. She ignores me. Best case scenario. She says, Hey, let's chat. Yeah. Right. You take the <laughs> risk. And, and now here we are. You've been with us about a year, year and a half. Uh -huh. and First thing, I didn't address it earlier, but you mentioned how fun your team is. Mm -hmm. and I tell you, on a daily basis, I laugh at the reels that your team puts uh, out yeah. or on Instagram, like, because they are just, you know, I hate the cliche, but it's true. It's, they're so out of the box yeah. and the normal everyday stuff that they make me laugh and then they inspire me. And I'm like, well, what should we be doing? Yeah. Like, how do take our product Aww. and make it as huh? fun as, as Karen and her team has. I'll have so, to tell Ruben you said that. Ruben's yeah, in charge of all right. of that. I know yeah, and he's... home talk to each other often uh -huh. uh, through direct message. And I know oh, good. Um, that Ruben had put us in touch with, uh, I believe her name is Maria Castro. And we did a little story on her on our website. Mm -hmm. And we also share a commonality in that Adine O'Neill, who is yep. on your ambassador yep. team, and she, she writes for us a lot and is one of our biggest supporters and we love Adina here um, at, at um, Run Try Bike and so you know we get to see that crossover and, and right. stuff like that it's fantastic. Um, we're getting a little late into the show so I want to make sure I get a couple of these questions in before I forget. Um, one of the things that we had talked about in the green room was charities and the causes that you support and I'd love for you to expand on that because you are in business and like I tell my students, we're in business to make money. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you're able to help charities and causes and do good in the world, you should do that too, is what I tell them. And so help us know, you know, who are who is it that you're supporting and causes and who could we be looking at so that we as individuals can help them too? Well, um, there was one that we supported and it was um, when the war started in the Ukraine. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because you don't realize that people in other parts of the world swim. And when the war happened, um, because we have the office in Poland, um, and a lot of those kids who were being displaced, you know, from the war, they, they were being placed by our office was finding homes with other swim coaches in Poland for them to go stay. And so they wanted to, our office wanted to make sure that they weren't going to be disrupted in their daily life or try to be, you know, try and keep um, as much normalcy as possible. And so um, they found some swim coaches and swim families that were willing to bring them in and feed them. And, um, and then we provided new equipment for them. Um, Finice joined us in doing that. Um, we sent money over there and, um, helped with feeding them because, you know, all of a sudden you're going from a family of four to maybe a family of eight, right. you know, that it's a lot. So that we, we've kind of backed off of that, um, lately. Um, and so right now we're working on save our beach, which that's more of a local one, but um, beaches, oceans are very near and dear to us. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we went down and we were helping with this organization last year and we're continuing it. In fact, we're doing it with them again on Saturday as well. So if anybody is in Southern California, near Seal Beach, we're gonna be there on May 20th from nine to 11. And we're just gonna be cleaning up the jetty. It's you wouldn't believe how much trash is there and you can check out our website or our um, Instagram later. Cause I think Ruben's going to be posting some pictures like he did last year of us cleaning up, but you know, everything flows down the jetty in Southern California, you know, the, the homeless trash and it gets buried in the rocks and it's just, it's horrible. And so it's very important for us to keep our beaches very clean, you know, for the wildlife and, and for people to enjoy too. We'll put so. that in the, here as well. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so that you guys can see it. That's um, great. My last question for you before we get into the rapid fire is um, I've been eyeing the Denny Crum two mile swim. Do you know of that event? It takes I place don't. Where does it take place? In Hermosa Beach. Oh, okay. No, I don't know about that. 
you start at Hermosa Beach, you swim out beyond the pier, uh -huh. then you swim to Manhattan Beach and go around the pier there and you finish and it's a two mile swim. Oh, it's a two mile swim? Yeah. So, I, so I've been eyeing that to get some tips from me if you hadn't heard about it. Well, no, I haven't heard that. I used to swim the, uh, we called it the pier to pier. It was Balboa to Newport. Okay. And I remember one time we were standing on the beach and there was a helicopter that was going up and down because there was a shark sighting. <laughs> and and the race, well, yeah, and the race director, he said, okay, so you can back out if you want, but if you don't want to, just swim fast. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we did. That was the worst swim of my life. Oh, my gosh. I, I felt like I swam all the way. I wasn't sighting right that day, and I felt like I went all the way to, to Catalina and back. But yeah, that was that was a difficult one. Have you ever raced uh, Alcatraz, the Escape from Alcatraz? Okay, no, I have not done that one because my kids, when they were really young, they saw the cartoon ad for it, and there was a shark coming up. So there was a swimmer swimming on the top, and Alcatraz is in the back, and a shark is coming up. And so from that point, my kids told me I could never do it. Now they're in their 30s, you know, so I'm sure I could get away with it. But that's a that's a grueling race. We've done the um, the expo many times, and it looks, yeah, it looks really hard. Yeah, so like, I, I've current. Been, yeah, when I was racing more often triathlon than I do today, mm -hmm. I was asked often, are you going to do Escape from Alcatraz? And I'm like, think about uh, this for a moment. It, <laughs> get sh shoved off a boat. Yeah, <laughs> hundreds of people that yeah. look like, Heels, swimming in shark infested waters like no i'm not no. doing that you know, <laughs> crazy <laughs> <laughs> no i you know i that one just didn't appeal to me <laughs> just because i part of my life i grew up in the bay area okay. and i know the bay and i know how choppy that water gets yeah and yeah. no and plus and cold yeah super yes. cold plus the water's yeah. freezing very cold this uh I, I raced at the Indian Wells 70.3 as part of the oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I did the bike mm -hmm. portion, but I had been swimming in the lake in Arizona through December and it was as cold as 52 degrees in the water. And I was like, yep. like this is so cold. Like who's yeah. sw swimming this purpose? Yeah. Like, yeah. They had to, one time I was supposed to race in it and it was the only time that um, they got snow right outside of Palm Springs. And so I remember the race director, he called it, he said, no, because people are going to get hypothermia. It was raining and it was, you know, and he made a good decision. Plus the pot back then, the potholes were unbelievable on that road. It's the, the, that road. It's still not that much better. Honestly, oh. like pretty <laughs> Yeah. Well, there's an idea for you in terms of product, right? So, you know, people, when they swim in cold water, put Vaseline on their face to keep it. Yeah. So that might be a product for you in the future. Maybe a heat, maybe a heating Vaseline. There you go. See? <laughs> Just put it all over your body. For all, for all you, for all you soon to be entrepreneurs, this is how it gets started. One person <laughs> idea out next it thing, is, you know? Oh, you should hear some of the stuff that goes on in our office. Like some of the crazy ideas we come up with. You'll have to invite me in one day so I could just listen you, and, and as I think uh, it would be fascinating to hear. You would be you would be laughing hysterically, that's for sure. Karen, thank you so much for your time. You're We're welcome. gonna rapid fire okay. questions because I don't want to go all day. So our rapid fire questions tend to focus mostly on food since you know we're endurance athletes and we're always either eating for energy or recovering with food in some form or fashion. But we like to touch on the touchy touch on the touchy topics of food. So pineapple on pizza. I know you're no. in California. Oh. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. yes. Perfect. <laughs> I'm a New York City kid. Like the only thing that belongs on pizza is sauce Pepperoni and cheese. Pepperoni and <laughs> cheese. That's it. No, no. In fact, my husband and I, we just had this conversation the other day. <laughs> he loves it. And I'm like, at no part should hot fruit be on a pizza. Ever. With tomato sauce. Ever. Ever. I always tell people, like, why do you want more acid on your acid? Like, pineapple <laughs> and so are tomatoes. Like, it doesn't make it's so sense. True. It's so uh, true. I love it. So here's the next one. Candy corn. Is that a real candy or is it just earwax coated in sugar? Um, it is not a real candy. <laughs> I think it gets stuck in your gut and it could be earwax with mixed with sugar <laughs> with pretty food coloring. <laughs> That's right. Are you a fan of peeps? 
you know, the, the Easter candy that comes out. You know what? I used to love Peeps. And then as an adult, you know, giving him, you know, when the Easter bunny. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, I don't think they taste as good as when I was little. And it's the same with Twinkies. I had a Twinkie for the first time in like 30 years and it does not taste as good. Yes. They so I don't know if it's just our, our taste buds no. that changed. Oh, uh. they changed the filling. So when we were kids, the filling was like sugary, gritty, like you could actually taste the sugar. Yes, and that's what it was. It, yeah, mm -hmm. now you can't. Whatever they did, they changed the formula. It's, and it's so bad. It's and terrible. now I'm, a, but you know, I have to give a plug for, um, um, oh my God, what's it called? Um, little Debbie, yeah. little Debbie Nutty Buddies. Yes. Anytime I go to CVS, I will, my mom got me hooked on it. And, um, she's like, we would go to CVS and she had a coupon and that's the only time she buys the Nutty Buddies. Well, I bought them out the other day because I'm so afraid of running out in my <laughs> cupboards. They were $2.79 for, awesome. for a box. They're like stuff they're not like air you know and like <laughs> you I know packaging it. it's like it that box is what you're getting of cookies so there's Do my plug <laughs> well, well we'll continue on a little <laughs> i don't rem i don't know if you remember in 2014 when little debbie was announced as the sponsor title sponsor for iron man chattanooga no there, yeah there was this uproar like how could this company be the sponsor of this healthy sport that we're all participating in and <laughs> I raced, I raced it. And I just remember at the finish line, like I couldn't get enough of the oatmeal cream pies and oatmeal peanut butter pies that they were handing oh, out. Yeah. And I wonder how many athletes were like, no, I don't want to eat that because this is not the healthy product that I'm supposed to Oh my to God, eat. are you kidding me? After I would race, I would eat anything. Just That's like, funny. especially I remember when I first started and I was at this bike shop and this guy, he said, you want to know what the best recovery food is and I he said because you're probably always trying to buy you know candy bars or put potato chips in or something you need something he said chocolate milk and since then you know I was yeah. doing chocolate milk and now it is known as a recovery but yes. back then it wasn't it's yeah. crazy like we, like every and everybody has their own thing right like whatever it is that you want to recover with recover with it like, yeah don't worry exactly don't worry about anybody else <laughs> I'm going to go back to Peeps for a second. So we okay. mentioned that Adina sent me because stale Peeps because we've had people on the show claim that the best type of Peep is a stale Peep, which oh. doesn't make sense. But anyway, hmm. Adina sent me some from, uh, I think she lives in Boston, but from New England area. And so it took a couple of days to reach me in Phoenix and they were uh -huh. stale. They were horrible. Like, it's just. So, a... so Adina was lying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if she, I don't know if she, yeah, she was, because she did say she enjoys stale peeps. <laughs> like, I don't guess she, it's, it's just, them. I mean, they're the cutest things. They really are. They're good in the package. We'll leave them yeah. there. Stare at them. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. Are you, are you a fan of licorice? I do like licorice. So, I don't like the red licorice. Yeah. I love black like, licorice. And so that means that I also like, um, uh, oh my I God, what that. is it? Absinthe. Have you ever yeah, tried so, absinthe? Yeah. Yeah. Without yeah. the opium. They don't make it with opium anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, absinthe, I like that. And then um, I put that in champagne. Interesting. So it's that is called Death in the Afternoon. And it was started by Ernest Hemingway. That was one of his favorite drinks. Interesting. And you just pour a glass of champagne until you have like maybe a shot left and then you pour the rest with absinthe in there and it's really good if you like black licorice it cool. turns a champagne sort of like um like kind of a light green and it's pretty called death in the afternoon it's called death in the afternoon yeah so brunch mimosas out death in the afternoon is in death in the <laughs> there you go <laughs> red velvet is red velvet a real flavor or is it just chocolate cake with red food dye um I think now that you're saying that, I think it's chocolate cake with red, red food dye. Yes. What do you think? Yeah. You're a hundred percent correct. You're yeah. Correct. Wait, did you really hear that from someone? I mean, is that how they make it? Yeah, that's exactly even, how they make it. No, I just buy the Betty Crocker mix and then. <laughs> that, that's exactly how they make it. It's oh, just really? Red, it's really chocolate cake with red food dye. Interesting. But people love it and they claim that it's a flavor. And I'm like, it's not a flavor. It's, it's a marketing trick. 
the marketing. I think you're right. Now I'm really disappointed because <laughs> you know, would it, do you guys have um, nothing? What's it called? Nothing bun the cake. Yes. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. So I love the red velvet, but now maybe <laughs> not so much. I might as well just get the chocolate. That's right. <laughs> but I always tell people marketing when they like marketing doesn't work. I'm like, do you buy red velvet cake? Because if you do, then marketing works. Yes. Work. Right. Marketing always works. It always yes. works. <laughs> Anyway, Karen, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this has been a blast. I really appreciate you coming on. And also want to thank you publicly for being a partner to Run, Try, Bike. We've been together for a little over a year. And, you know, every two months when we get your ad, it always makes me smile. And every day when I see <laughs> your Instagram posts from Ruben, they are fantastic. So thank you. keep doing what you're doing. We really appreciate it. Oh, can I say one more Please thing? Please do. Um, okay, so you asked where to get our products. Yes. Um, I had mentioned Amazon, but we if you go onto our website, we have um, one of those location finders. So sure. you can always find all the mom pop stores. I like to encourage people shopping for mom pops. And then, of course, um, Amazon, of course, Swim Outlet, too. Oh. So, yeah. But I we really want to support those small businesses. So I may have to hit you up later on um, because I do teach intro to marketing. Mm -hmm. And you just talked about basically where to buy it, which is the place we can talk about like all the four P's of marketing, which is something that we emphasize in intro to marketing. So you might have to be a case study for my sure. next term um, sure. for my students coming sure. up. Sure. I like to talk. Uh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. I right. really appreciate it. Those of you that are joining late, this will be on our feed and it will also be on our YouTube channel and our website by Thursday of this week. Um, so check out the full conversation there. Have a great night. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. And bye. bye. Bye, everybody.